The annual point in time count is done each year nationwide to try and get a snapshot in time of just how many people might be living on the streets on one given night. Uh, we had several teams going out last night um, and found about 88 people that are not living in shelter here but that um, are homeless and that can come and utilize services here at Switchpoint. The mission is to reach out to those in need so they are aware what services are offered in the community. In conjunction with the three-day count, Switchpoint features a free health fair where people in need can receive much-needed items and services they may otherwise never get. Um, so that they can participate in some health screenings, get a blood pressure check, get their feet checked, have an eyesight uh, check so that if they need some glasses and that's been part of the problem of no, no employment, they can't see. Haircuts were a hot item among these men who received much-needed pampering from volunteers. I saw it on a poster and um, I think it's like the greatest thing ever to be a part of something. Um, I definitely needed the help to realize that I needed the help. Switchpoint just provides such a great amount of services and a great resource for the entire community and if I can be a part of that just for a few hours by helping out with haircuts, then that's great. Food and water, hygiene products, clothing items, and even warm coats were popular freebies as well. I think it's, it's very fuzzy, feel it. Along with the free donated items, the survey includes questions to help those in need. How long have you been homeless? You know, where did you sleep the night of Wednesday? Um, and uh, do you have any other barriers, uh, addiction, um, you know, domestic violence, you know, abuse type, type situations? Because then we can point them in a better direction. I was brought here in 2016 from a, a women's safe house. I got hurt really bad from my ex. <laughs> and and, um, and Carol's pretty much taken me under her wing and, and helped me. They helped me. They're just amazing. <laughs> I'm going to cry. But. While the stories of homelessness may vary, the need is real. Hollowell said that transient homelessness has increased this winter in St. George due to illegal homelessness laws recently passed in other cities where living on the streets is no longer an option. Uh, instead, we're seeing this migration right now um, that we have not experienced in our almost six years of being open. Uh, people coming from Las Vegas or Southern California and looking for larger shelter spaces that they can be and, um, and have just a place, safe place. Youth Futures, a local youth shelter in St. George, also provides for teens who need a safe place. Free meals are always a big draw during this point in time count. The hope is to provide the help needed, especially for those who may be silently suffering in pain. Most of the people that we see um, are struggling with other issues, uh, namely mental health. And so it's hard for them to maintain their relationships when um, they're dealing unmedicated or they're not compliant with medication with a mental health issue. People that are cruel to us and treat us like we're trash, they don't know what we've been through, you know. And of course, the long-term goal is to find more permanent housing for those who are chronically homeless. That if we had permanent supportive housing options, which, you know, we've got to work on, that's got to become a priority this year, um, then they wouldn't be homeless anymore. But they've been chronically homeless, meaning that, you know, for five or more years here in Washington County, they've, they've been homeless. In Washington County, Melissa Anderson, Community Education News.